Um, I've got to remember the intro now. Okay, so here we are. This is L Art Podcast, and the L starts for stands for L. Oh, there we go. <laughs> this, is, this is going to sound great later, believe me. Hi guys, it's Jason from L Artcast Podcast. The L stands for love. Today we're going to be talking to Miranda Smart, who is a fantastic illustrator and comic book artist. So if you like this podcast and you want to find out a bit more about Miranda, then we'll give you the info later. So Miranda, welcome. Hi. Welcome, hi. We are joining Miranda at the Sanctuary Art Studio in Northampton. We're on the top floor and uh, they have several artists doing their stuff up here. So what sort of hours do you keep within the studio then? I, I'm usually in a lot, to be honest. I'll come in, if I'm, if I'm not working at the cafe, I'll come in most days from like two till the evening. But sometimes I come after dinner and just work late as well. I do quite like w- working in the evening, quite peaceful. Yeah, whenever really, whenever yeah. I get the time. As, yeah, as much time as I can. But it has been closed over lockdown. Yeah, of course, um, yeah. So So I when just, did you come back? She had no idea. Yeah. What, what, I don't even know what date it is. <laughs> Maybe like a month ago. Yeah. A month ago? Which was a real momentous exactly. occasion to get back in and just start doing what you love again. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Did you sort of create during the lockdown or do you sort of try to keep it to the studio? Or you... I did, yeah, I did loads of stuff in lockdown. Mm. Like we were saying earlier about some of your work that you can see online, you have like a sort of very fluid, mm-hmm. melting kind of style. I, the, yeah, the fluid thing just feels really natural. I just love drawing liquids. I love looking at liquids yeah. and drawing liquids. Because initially, if you think about drawing a liquid, you'd be... I'd really sort of struggled to think, how am I going to start drawing a liquid? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I was having this conversation recently, actually, that I, I really struggle to draw quite a lot of things in terms of perspective. But the one thing I've never struggled to draw is just like liquids. Mm. And, and a lot of people are like, yeah, that's the hardest thing to draw. But it, it, it does come quite naturally to me. I can't really do a lot of perspectives or like buildings or landscapes or whatever. But... Um, yeah, fluids. Yeah. So, <laughs> would you sort of think like for you, if you say if you're doing sort of like um, anything that has like a, an image of a person in it or like a figurative piece, mm. would you like to keep it quite close up so you haven't got to go too much into detail from the backgrounds and perspective and things? Because uh, you have done sort of figurative stuff as well, haven't you? Yeah, I, I think figurative stuff. It totally depends on my mood. Mm. Sometimes, sometimes. I, I've got it in my head and, and it's fine and I can draw it and the perspective comes together and it's fine. But then sometimes it's like way off. I think it, I think it's when I've had the chance to do like life drawing classes mm. and kind of hone that skill that I've, I'm more able to communicate people and figures and into, into drawings. Um, but recently, yeah, I feel like it's, it's too my brain can't quite get there mm. at the moment. I need to do some more some more life drawing, some more like honing of that skill. Yeah. Yeah, I'm interested in the ink side of things as well because um, I was when I was looking at your work, I actually thought a lot of it looked like quite digital work. Mm-hmm. But it's actually ink. Well, some of it, yeah, yeah. But, but all of the all of the line work is completely not digital. Yeah. <laughs> ink, ink on paper. Yeah. Yeah, I just use a brush pen and like Sketch pen. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. No. Re- other than like the colours, I do the colour. I scan the the ink drawings in and then colour it digitally. But I can't really get the 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 feel, the natural feel that I do. Um, if I'm drawing straight digital, yeah. it doesn't feel right yeah. to me personally. So you've got to have that sort of real kind of elemental thing to start with, you know, yeah, where you're actually definitely. touching something mm-hmm. in your hands with the paper and... Yeah, yeah, just like the flow of the ink onto the paper. Yeah. It's like, that's that's the thing, you know, yeah. that's the yeah, that's the motivation, that's what I continue to do. Yeah, yeah. If we just sort of maybe take a couple of steps back now, mm-hmm. can you just share a bit of information about yourself? So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, maybe sort of where you studied, things like that. 
I went to uni in London, Lon London College of Communication, study um, illustration and visual media. Okay. Uh, which I loved, absolutely loved. Was that like a three year? Yeah, I did a foundation first at yeah. LCC as well, um, which was cool as well. Would recommend a, a foundation if you want to study art. Cause yeah. it's, just, it's just fun and you get to you get to learn so much and explore so much and you don't have to get like worried that if you decide to do something or try something out that it's going to seal the, your fate for the rest of eternity. So, but you really enjoyed that experience? Yeah, yeah. I really did. For first year, I was a bit... Meh, didn't have much motivation, but the course kept changing, which is what I really liked. Like our course leader really listened to our problems with the course, and she was always open to kind of changing things up, which was awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then I, had, then I had a really great tutor, my third year. Which really helps. Doesn't really, it? really, really helped. Yeah. yeah. Who was really into comics and could kind of steer me in the direction of like the best experimental stuff and like all the weird stuff yeah 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 so when awesome. when you were sort of with that uh lecturer is it or teacher T tutor tutor yeah, tutor, yeah. Mm -hmm. were you already sort of like going in the direction of comics or was that a sort of influence on you to go in that direction i was already yeah trying to do but i hadn't actually made any i knew that i wanted to be a comic book artist but i think i was kind of afraid of the medium because I just thought it was so amazing. I thought if I started doing it and it wasn't good enough, it would kind of like mess with my perspective mm. of the whole thing, which, which would have been so sad. It's a confidence thing, isn't it? Is it is a confidence yeah, thing, yeah. yeah. So I made sure that I was good enough at, at drawing or good, like, able to do it or just knew why I wanted to do it yeah. before I started. And then, yeah, third year I just sat down and drew a comic he was like just do it and yeah. I was like okay because <laughs> I think a lot of things that stops people is um, and I'm really really guilty of this myself is that mm. if in my mind I think I'm not going to achieve perfection yeah. almost straight away mm -hmm. it almost throws up a barrier to me yeah. you know and I think we've got to overcome this sort of sense of like you know if we don't achieve right at the start we've failed you've mm. got to actually fail quite a lot I think before you kind of get to the point where you feel like you're yeah. starting to succeed yeah I, I mean, yeah that is very true but at the same time I am kind of glad that I waited because I th there were so many other things that I'd learned about drawing and just the theory of comics before I started doing it that really helped me and that built my confidence even more so that what that time that I did start making comics and narratives I had all this information that I could that I'd prepared myself mm. for so I think research is like hugely important important and hugely underrated as well yeah. in the arts with the narrative side of it mm -hmm. slightly different mm -hmm. so you've got you know you've got the skills to kind of draw or ink or do uh, an image that you're really really keen to do but then to do a narrative is sort of slightly different skill set, isn't it? To kind of come up with an idea of a beginning, yeah. middle and an end. How do yeah. you find that? Yeah, see, that's an interesting one because um, I, always, I always loved doing things for the story and having like, memories and stories in my mind and things I'd experienced and people I'd met. And I always wanted, that's partly why I loved comics is that it, it allowed people to do that, tell their stories in like, in like a not so perfect way. I feel like writing, I, I couldn't quite get my head around that, mm. um, but I still wanted to tell stories. Um, but then I had kind of like a, a barrier. I struggled to, to connect. So when you read a comic or you read a narrative, it feels fully formed. Mm. But when you remember something that happened to you, it's so vague and so like, it's not like how you read the story, you mm. know, it's mm. just completely different. And so I was really struggling to, to have a narrative that showed my memory of it yeah. rather than the thing that happened because I'm not sure about the thing yeah. that happened you know I, I'm not documenting every experience in my life you know I'm not taking a lot of pictures I'm not writing in a diary you mm. know so 
Is it important to get it completely correct, uh, the, the memory of what you're sort of like trying to get down, or are you happy to sort of fill in the blanks with a bit of artistic license? Well, you know? see, that's, that's why I kind of turn to experimental comics and abstract mm. comics, because it's, it's not correct at all. Mm. And it doesn't even matter that it's correct. It's mm. self-aware of being just part of the memory or trying to convey the emotion of the thing that I felt or what elements were involved, but not exactly what their faces look like. And that's why my characters are kind of shapes mm. and textures mm. and just like the concept or the metaphor of what happened, because that's how I remember things. Yeah. So you're trying to convey like a feeling. Yeah. Rather than, yeah. yeah, because when I was looking at your work, that's really what I got from it was like a, because I mean, I, I was trying to follow the, uh, the panels and uh, and I sort of started to realize because I mean from the ones that I've looked at we're not talking dialogue boxes yeah. of words we're, <laughs> we're looking at images aren't we yeah. and then we're trying to work out what it means to us you know they follow really beautifully and then you've got to kind of sort of feel like what's that emotion that it's making me feel and like we were saying before about like there's a certain fluidity to what you do you can almost just imagine the mind sort of just melting away as you're like looking at them as well you're kind of mm -hmm. quite hypnotic I think yeah. as you go into them yeah that's what I was going for yeah, yeah that's good <laughs> I'm glad that's what you were feeling yeah I did and what I really loved as well was like sort of the, the real vividness of of the images and uh, sort of and there are kind of a couple of black and white things going on there but I really picked up on the the vivid stuff mm, the, yeah, yeah I, I, I love colors I think that's just kind of like personal taste yeah. and I love, I love just contrast I think there's, there's so much power in contrasting colours yeah. you don't even like notice it but it's it so stands out some colours don't really shine on their own but when you get the right colour to next to them they can really pop out can't yeah. They? yeah I think it's interesting what you've shown in your work is that there's this sort of side to comic books which I know looking into your world there's like a whole sort of world of comic books which are totally different are you trying to purposefully sort of pull away from that kind of world of comics? You know? Yeah, a bit, a bit of both, really. Like, I would, I would have originally loved to be good at make drawing traditional comics, mm. um, but it just didn't make sense to me. It didn't, mm. it didn't come naturally. I, I didn't want to draw things that were there. I'd get distracted. I'd start drawing a panel and then just get distracted, and suddenly there's like. I don't know, a crack in the sky and there's mm. aliens coming out of it. And yeah. It's, you know, fluid everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, mostly because it came naturally. but And then I was just started discovering all of these experimental alternative comics and I just love them. Yeah. And I think a lot of it is, is I, I really love uh, psychedelic rock music oh, as well. Okay, yeah. Um, and there's, there's a lot of uh, artists who do album art and poster art and they also do comic books as well yeah. and there's always seems to be kind of like a natural um, connection yeah I did two. notice I was going to touch on that as well um, you've done some uh, would you call it comic book stuff but you've done uh, like in collaboration with some music as well haven't you so you can, yeah that's comic yeah yeah so you can see your your art juxtaposed uh, against the music that uh, that goes with it mm -hmm. is that is that still available to to listen to things that you've yeah, you know, yeah 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 I'm there's a few that I'm I'm doing some more as well I'm mm. in the process I've actually been uh, approved funding to do a project next year excellent uh, collaborating with four musicians doing yeah. four different experimental wow collaborations so that'll be fun it's really exciting yeah so if anyone listening makes music and wanna you know apply to collaborate with me let me know. Yeah, definitely do that, guys. Um, are you sort of hearing the music and creating the images, or which way around is it? I guess it's music first. It's both, okay. actually. Um, I've done I've done a few different ones. Uh, originally, yeah, I was just kind of drawing to music, um, but then, yeah, some. But then, it, it kind of it's hard to do it as specifically as I want to do it. Mm. Um, and be able to know 
what kind of control the time element mm. in that you're literally reading and listening and you just know when to turn the page yeah. kind of thing uh. um so so then i found it kind of easier to do it the other way around and then kind of keep going back and forth with the musician um so that you're both making sure you've got those cues in the narrative and in the music that make you know that that sound is being represented by that image so like some kind of big splash and then you see a big splash mm. you know but then also but but with music so it's more abstract than that that's really fascinating so hopefully if you've got it right mm -hmm. when the music ends you get to the end yeah <laughs> as well. yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so that's um the the, the first proper well i did two at uni uh two at, like experimental ones and then and then i did a collaboration with joke sound mm. uh to do um a, a, a rom an abstract romance called brisdamar and yeah i looked at that that yeah, one yeah. yeah i was i really enjoyed doing that one that was really fun um and yeah we took it to some like comic fairs uh and there's a, it comes with a record as well we got some records pressed or you can have a digital download mm. as well um, and we took the record to the comic fairs and people could listen and read the comic at the same time. And it was actually, it's so, it's so amazing when someone gets the right timing. It's yeah. like, what? <laughs> I, I tell you what, I, there's got to be a, 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 like a market for that because that, so, that is so cool, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, really, when you think about it, it's, yeah, it's the sort of thing it's that weird. really makes me, Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully I'll be making some more soon. That one, we, we might have a few more copies left um, to sell. I can see it really working in, in the mental health area, mm -hmm. just because I suppose if you've got a certain style of music and you've got sort of imagery to go with it, that it could, be, could have quite a meditative effect. Um, I mean, yeah, is, it, is it that cross your mind? Or? Yeah, for sure, yeah. it is quite, it's quite satisfying as a thing. Um, just, it, I think it's quite immersive. I think that's what's nice about it is that, that you have, you really have to concentrate, but not in like a in like a this is annoying concentrate mm, way. Yeah. A girl once said, I, I did, I did a, a talk about another uh, audiovisual comic that I've been working on, um, and a girl said to me afterwards that she really likes listening to um, like electronic dance music, mm. but since she can't go to clubs anymore, she doesn't like it because it's all about the entire experience for mm, her. Mm. And she she thought that this would be a good way of her still enjoying the music, but having that visual element to kind mm. of become immersed in it because it wasn't immersive enough on its own. Yeah. And she kind of lost lost that that interest in it. Oh yeah, yeah you're really onto something. And it's good you got funding as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah How would you go good. about applying for funding? That like one, that? that one was um, the Arts Council Fund. Mm. Uh, so it was a Develop Your Creative Practice mm. grant that you apply for. They do various rounds. I think the next one's deadline is in like 10 days or something, but yeah. they do various rounds. You just have to talk about your project, what you're going to do, um, who's going to be involved, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. Do you need to know about music yourself? Do, you know? do I need yeah. to know about? Me? I don't know anything really about music. No, no. no. <laughs> I just um, trust trust my collaborators. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love that. Really, really love that. So you sort of mentioned a little bit earlier on that um, your tutor was sort of like quite influential on sort of the the direction in mm -hmm. which your sort of comic book fascination went. Yeah. And it took you down that route. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. What sort of influences are there that come from back then that you, you know, that really inspired oh, you to know. take it this direction? Uh, well, he he's actually a comic book artist as well, Luke Best. He yeah. was um, kind of put me onto some kind of experimental comics, and I actually wrote about this. So there's this guy, Luke Ramsey, who does. Um, lo he used to do loads of uh, abstract comics, and. 
he, he was a big influence on me. He's collaborated with a lot of people. Um, and then there's like the original alternative comics artists, underground comics artists like Robert Crumb. Um, he they did he did like Zap comics, uh, which were a lot a lot of the artists who contributed to Zap, uh, were also kind of psychedelic rock mm. poster artists kind of thing. Uh, Victor Moscoso is my absolute favorite. Just so weird and so trippy. Yeah. And yeah, mostly, and just just yeah, a lot of other. Uh, there's I have so many influences. Yeah, mm. it's hard to decide. I don't actually write a list. Yeah, I I, d- I think freelance. sometimes the questions a little. It's I mean it's a fairly straightforward question, but actually to answer something like that, it's mm-hmm. it's quite a difficult one, really, isn't it? Yeah, I, I tried to think of influences, and I wrote on like three post-it notes, and I was oh, like, that's <laughs> too long, and then I've shortened it down to one post-it <laughs> yeah. note of names. Uh, so Chris Ware, big yeah. inspiration for me. Uh, he just does like really calming vibe. There, there are representational comics, but just just the way that he um, uses panels and narrative is very kind of experimental and different. And I love love the way that he kind of plays with with narrative. And sometimes you can go two different directions. Mm. Sometimes there's two things happening at the same time. And sometimes time is represented in like the size of the panels and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, Michael DeForge, he's a great Canadian experimental comics guy. Just amazing colors, amazing vibes, narrative. Jesse Jacobs as well, really good. Are these um, comics that you can buy physically? Yeah. 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 They're all. They're, I think the best ones, like publishers. For kind of more experimental alt comics, uh, like Drawn and Quarterly, Fantagraphics, mm. uh, Koyama Press, they're they're the, they're the main ones. Yeah. And then there's uh, Cynthia Alfonso and Oscar Rania. I don't know if you know if that's how you pronounce the yeah. names, but they they make some really amazing abstract comics, like shapes and stuff. And they started doing animations as well. Yeah. Um, so they're pretty pretty special people. Love love their comics what does what do you think that um do you think what you're putting down in print is that saying anything about you personally or are you are you more sort of i'm um, not really thinking about the self you're just getting stuff down or is there a message do you ever sort of try and create a message through your work or is it all just yeah I, i'm sure. creating now and really you know i'm not really thinking about too you know i don't want to put too much emphasis on what I'm trying to say, I'm just trying to create. Uh, I think I'm definitely trying to say something. Mm. I think, yeah, I think I think shapes and panels and comics are just kind of my language. Um, I've never, I never used to be that good at words, saying things, communicating mm. things. I remember being a little kid, just being really angry uh, because I'm trying to explain something and no one understands me and no one takes me seriously and just having like crazy stresses about that Mm. and then I find that I don't know drawing sketching is kind of my language so I'm definitely saying something and it's definitely like pent up things that I can't quite communicate um so did you find that satisfying then if you get to a point mm -hmm. where you you feel like you've you've actually got something from the inside out and that gets out of you Mm -hmm. you can really feel yeah, yeah, some definitely. satisfaction from that. Definitely. Yeah, I, I I listen to a lot of like philosophy podcasts. Okay. And I like to kind of analyze things, and I think a lot of the narratives are, are me trying to make sense of things that I experience or that I see in the mm. world. Yeah, and that's kind of where the the music comes in as well because mm. I think that's they do, do that good in music, just trying to make sense of something and to get it out of you. That's really interesting. Yeah. What What about recently? What have you seen recently then, or what's going on in the in the mind at the moment? Sort of that you want to express. Mm. I mean, I, I'd imagine, not putting words in your mouth, but mm-hmm. lockdown must have really, you know, for for a lot of artists, I would have thought would have kind of created some real some real material, either sort of like the, the worry, the anxiety of lockdown, or perhaps for me. At the beginning, 
um, was sort of like a, a real eye opener to how things could possibly be. And uh, and then second time or third time round, it sort of felt a lot, a lot more of a trudge. Might be weather related, but I definitely thought first time round. Um, I had anxieties about where where it's going, you know, and there was no real sort of you couldn't really know in what direction it was going to go, and you know, are we going to be safe? Are we not going to be safe? And that was that was real anxiety for me. And then, mm. um, but at the same time, sort of on the flip side of that, I was like walking around feeling like I was having like ten epiphanies a day about no planes in the sky and mm -hmm. just the sort of vibrancy of nature and colour that seemed to like. For some reason, again, this could be because it was just sunny all the time, but just everything seemed to like really pop. Yeah, the definitely. Colour and things. I definitely. I definitely experienced that for sure. Yeah. And just like looking at the architecture of Northampton, mm. I really found like a new discovery. Oh, really? Just yeah. Walking around, going for your occasional walk to stay sane. Yeah. Just being able to see things that I hadn't really noticed. Do you, are you local to the town? Do you live in the town? Yeah, I live in by the race course. Okay, so what what sort of popped out for you then that you hadn't really noticed before? Ah, oh, just it's just everything. Just when you're walking around town, you never. I I had barely ever would look up. Yeah. So, and yeah. the 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 sh the buildings above the shops around town are just like really beautiful yeah. and just all different, and they're just like crazy and. And then you, and then the actual shop is just like <laughs> the opposite. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> that's a real thing. It's an amazing line yeah. of like trashy high street brands, and then beautiful architecture yeah. in yeah. the same building. <laughs> yeah, it's fascinating that I think that, but I, I, mm. I, I believe that. I think sometimes we don't look up enough or mm. look around us enough because I've noticed that before. Mm. In fact. Um, one of the streets in our town, St Giles Street, has some really fascinating um, tiles outside the front of them. I don't know if you've ever noticed these, but if yeah. you're yeah, walking have, towards yeah. town, left-hand side, they've got a real, it's like Art Deco sort of tiling thing mm -hmm. going on the floor. It's absolutely gorgeous. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, it, I did notice that maybe a couple of years ago, but, you know, considering I've lived here for most of my life, it's crazy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Just always discovering new stuff. I think that's what I really like about Northampton. There's a few buildings I really love in, in Northampton as well. There's Bedford oh, yeah. Mansions. Do you know Bedford no, Mansions? No, it's Bedford Mansions. Um, it so it's opposite the Rennie McIntosh Museum. Okay. Yeah, it's just like a, just like a block of flats, but it's really... I, it's I a love, nice block it's of flats. It's a nice block of flats, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, you've got... There's, I'm not sure what the religion is, but there's a church... Um, I'm, I'm terrible with street names, but um, it's near Darrington, and when you drive past it, it looks like a, like something that you would get in the States, in America, really. It's sort of like very yeah. low, single-story buildings spread right out, and then they've kind of got that little bit in the middle, that, you know, with the, with the apex, and yeah. but there's just something about that that screams mid-century style, <laughs> and I, I, I just, you know, and I love that. So there's, yeah, there's plenty to look at. In uh, in our town, you just gotta you just gotta yeah. look, haven't you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so that's so. I might have just put words into your mouth there, anyway. But I was just sort of like trying to get to that sort of thing where you, what, you know, what what's what's your take on things at the moment? Where where do you think you're gonna be? Duh. I just want to make comics. Just make comics. Yeah. I do kind of want to be able to communicate more more like real issues for sure. Mm. But I just haven't. But my like the. You know the language of shapes is kind of hard to do that, but I think it kind of if it's if it's presented to the right mind of yeah. whoever's reading it, maybe it could still ask some questions, mm. ask some big questions. Yeah, I definitely. just kind of want to get that that middle ground of like not not being too literally like in your face. This is my opinion, um, but kind of question whoever the readers yeah. is to what their opinion could be yeah it's really it really is in what's going on in that person's mind isn't it yeah. you know what they're gonna take <laughs> from what you've done yeah but, you know it's like you know but i bet that would be an interesting thing to be able to really see into the 
the minds of people that are looking at your work, whether you mm. can, whether they can get what you're trying to say, or whether they've got a completely different take on it, which you didn't see, but you think, oh yeah, do you know what? That's actually yeah. No, you know, I, I really love that as well. Yeah. People give me feedback. And, yeah. Do you? Yeah, I love it. Good or bad or both? Both. Yeah. yeah. Like I just love an honest opinion or like a natural reaction to something. Yeah. Yeah. The the, the people who uh, printed. Briz de Mar, which is supposed to be like a romance. Mm. They were trying to guess what the like, story was, and one of them said, oh, it could be a romance, and the other one was like, nah, it's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah, it's so, both, you Yeah, know? <laughs> definitely. The guy or the person who said about the nightmare, I just wonder what his relationship's going yeah. like at the moment. <laughs> um, oh, I, was, I just sort of made a note about what, what inspires me sometimes. Like, and I remember being, I went to an art gallery. I can't remember the gallery, but it was in, um, I think it was in Peckham. This is going back years and years and years. And I remember walking around, coming out of the gallery, small gallery, into this yard and looking around thinking, well, there was a crisp packet stuck in a fence, right? Why a fence? And mm-hmm. in my mind, straight away, was like, oh, that's part of the installation. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I, I sometimes see things like that. I, I, especially if, especially if I've sort of, you know, you've walked through the door of a gallery or a museum, so your mind is ready to be expanded or to accept what you see. And then, so I felt like I was sort of like funneled through there and into the yard. And then I just sort of saw everything in that yard as something to do with art as well. Mm-hmm. And it was like, it was a really interesting moment for me, I think, where it sort of really opened my eyes up to sort of like, Everything around us is, mm-hmm. you know, is, is a visual art form in a way. Yeah, no, it? definitely. Yeah. You said, you, I mean, this is like just going off the, off on a tangent now, but you said you work in a cafe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah which yeah. cafe do you work I in? I just started up McGee Street. Oh, have you? Yeah. I've seen you in there. I don't know. I've only, I only had two shifts. Well, I'm, we're going there all the time. I'm yeah. going there all the time. So, oh, that's cool. So yeah, I'll yeah. catch you, catch oh, you in there. Oh, it's great. Then. I love it. Yeah. It's so nice. Every, everyone's so lovely that comes in. I remember when that place first opened and uh, it was like, there was, especially in our shop, there was a real, because we were like big coffee drinkers, me and a guy who used to work there anyway. God, we were buzzing. We were really waiting for it to open. (laughs) And then it opened and it was so successful that they closed within a couple of months of opening because they just couldn't handle it. Wow. Yeah, and they had to like do a whole restructure (laughs) on how they were going to do stuff. That's crazy. Yeah. So I think I think we've got some really good stuff there. Um, is there anything that you wanted to mention that we haven't talked about? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's <laughs> I it's don't, hard. It's isn't hard it? to just think like, what have we just yeah. spoken about? Yeah, like, it's not it's not in categories in my head yet. <laughs> should we should we should we just uh, should we cover the graffiti because we, we yeah, talked sure. about that, didn't we? And um, I got introduced really well. First, I first sort of found out about you when um, Bill. Mm-hmm. His second mention on the podcast, two in a <laughs> row, when he did the signs yeah. through lockdown. Yeah, yeah. And you did yours. And I did and this one. That's right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that was a great thing. Yeah, then, no, that, um, was, that was great. I yeah. love that. And people really liked it. So. Yeah, they did, didn't they? Met oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, met my eyesore, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So, so I saw was the the guy who really told me that he did graffiti as well. So that's when I sort of picked up on that as well, yeah. which I really really enjoyed looking at yours. And he was really sort of big time into your work. So, um, do you find that the sort of graffiti style that you use is very much like your sort of comic book style, or are you doing something different there? Um, I think it's all just me and my style. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's hard because. I'm not. I'm. I'm very new to it. Mm. Like doing doing big pieces, and it just came about because I was just kind of frustrated at a lot of things, mm. and and I felt like my small little sketches just weren't right. cutting it. You know, so I yeah. wanted to make bigger stuff, make a big impact. You know, just get it, get some ideas, and just chuck them on a wall kind mm. of thing. And this is with spray paint. Is it? With spray yeah. paint, yeah. Mm. But I'm obviously not. I've had like very little practice yeah. with spray paint, so I had I've had to kind of like change my style in that I can't do the crazy specific details mm. that I can with a with a brush. Um, uh, so, but I I can keep my my like colors. I've maintained a lot of the colors. Yeah, and the shapes. I'm going to try and integrate like the shapes a bit more. 
with um, stuff. Just trying to remember, are you using words or not using words? I do, I do words, but yeah. not like many. No, yeah. Just some lettering. Yeah. Some lettering, but not, it's not the main thing. No. It's just kind of like a small part of it. Just as like a little signature kind of thing. Um, so another sort of thing, I did send you this this morning, so it's fine if you didn't get a chance to really think about it. But I, I was trying to sort of get to the end of these podcasts with then somebody sort of um, we're having like this sort of one call thing or mm. their hot take on something at the moment. Did you manage to think of something for that? I did. There's so many things, mm. um, but I'm going to go with lumpen projects and lumpen uh, archive right which is a website that just is just an archive of experimental comics and i uh, it's relatively new yeah and i just yeah i love it how do we spell that l u m p e n is it like long lumpen.com or what's the no lumpen archives archives i have no idea if i've pronounced that right or anything but um yeah, it's just all over, from all over the world. Yeah, it's just like oh yeah, all these all the crazy weird comics. So is, so if we're clicking on this, are we going into the comic? Oh, that's really cool. And then yeah. it's got links. It's just it's just really well put together. Yeah, because it's you know simple and you can find the artists and find the information. So that's lumpenarchives.com. Yeah, check mm-hmm. it out because that does look really cool. So um, have you got anything on there yourself? Yeah, Brisdemar is on there. Right. Okay. Oh, and Vimto Jelly Beans. Yeah. Love Vimto Jelly Beans. And that's, what is that? Is that another Candy. sort of... Candy. That's just oh, sweets. Well. <laughs> it's like VimtoJellyBeans.com. <laughs> no. So it's candy, is it? Oh, okay, yeah. Have you ever well, had Vimto Jelly Beans? Yeah, I didn't know they even existed. They exist, yeah. and they're really good. Oh, man. I can't do things like that, not, not anymore. <laughs> not on my teeth. But uh, So, um, right, well, that's really cool. I think, I think that's it. Yeah, Yeah, I cool. think we covered it all. Should we just say a couple of places where we can sort of pick your work up? So if you sort of... Uh, on my website, mirandasmart.com, Instagram, yeah. mirror.and.or. Yeah. Yeah, just there's there's links on my website. Yeah, so, so links on the website, mm-hmm. so mirandasmart.com. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like I say, um, if you go and visit that, uh, guys, you'll, you'll be really, really... Sort of, well, I hope you will be anyway. I was blown away by the images and... I think, like from what we've discussed today, you'll have a real, real good sense of like where Miranda's coming from. You know, I think this is a good way into your your mm-hmm. your illustrations because mm-hmm. you can get to know a bit about you. And I think, like I even I now understand a bit more about what I was looking oh, at yeah. over the last sort of weeks That's good. to get to know you. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So thanks, Miranda. It's been great. Thanks for chatting with me. Yeah, no problem. <laughs>